Hi everybody, thanks for coming back and watching another tutorial video. If you like these tutorials, then please let me know in the comments below if you have anything you want to see me try and make, uh, then yeah, just let me know. So this video was inspired by my web development projects for beginners video, which you can watch here. I'm going to be building a random color generator in JavaScript. The idea being that every time the user clicks a button, they get a brand new random color. I decided to build this because when I'm building my own personal projects, you always need to come up with colors. And, you know, I kind of don't want to just stick with red, green, and blue all the time. It's nice to just, you know, come up with a random color, maybe. So there we go. That's step one of building a project. Find an issue or problem you're having and try and think how you can solve it in code. Step two would then be to kind of jot that idea down on a piece of paper, sort of walk yourself through the steps of what you're going to need to do to start with zero and then actually end up with a random color on your screen. And then step three, of course, is getting down and writing the code. So uh, without further ado, let's take it away. So first thing you're going to want to do is go to GitHub and open up a new project and then clone it to your local machine. Uh, if you want to learn how to do this, I've made another video on it. So uh, just click here and uh, it'll take you to that video. But in the meantime, I'll just open up one now. Okay, so now that I've made a project, I'm just going to go here and open in desktop. Okay, great. So now that's on my system. I should see it in here. Random colors. Okay. So I want to go ahead and open that up now in Sublime Text. Okay, so now that I've opened up the project in Sublime Text, I'm going to add three things to it. An index.html file, a CSS file, and a JavaScript file. So let's call this one index.html. Make a new one, call it site.css. And make a new one and call it site.js. So now I have an index, a CSS, and a JavaScript file on the project ready to go. So here in using Sublime Text, I can uh, bootstrap or boilerplate a project very easily. I just start typing HTML, I hit enter, and then I get all this lovely code, which uh, for most part right now I don't actually need. So let's get rid of everything in the body. Um, I'll leave modernizer in there. I don't need that. So let's get rid of that. And let's call the project the title random colors. Okay. And let's also go ahead while we're here and that and link up my CSS. We'll also add in the JavaScript while we're here. So script, let's go to that, uh, site.js. Okay. So I have my index.html file. I have my CSS file, which is here and it's linked here. And I have my JavaScript file, which is here and it's linked here. Okay, so first things first, let's go ahead and just check that's all working. Um, so let me just make a quick button with an on click event. Uh, I'll call that function check. Check, doesn't really matter. And um, here I'll go, I'll set the body the background color to red. Okay, and in here I just need to make a function called check, which um, shows an alert that says hi. So let's save that. And I'll just head over here to a program I use called Web Server for Chrome. And here it basically allows you to host a file it allows you to host a folder from your computer as if it were a real website so let me just open that up in this file okay, i uh, just paused it for a second and opened up my local host server here in chrome other than safari so it will work a little bit better okay so the first thing i want to do then here is start working on my html markup um Obviously, I want to make a div that is going to hold everything. So that's inside the body. Let's make a div. I'm going to give it a class. I'm going to call that wrapper. And then I'll close that div. And then inside that div, I'm going to nest another div. I'm going to call that div 
uh, box. So what I'm doing is basically making a box with a box inside it. So I'm nesting a div inside a div. And inside that div called box, I'm going to make another div. I'm going to call it RGB. Okay, close that off. Okay, and then underneath that div RGB, I'm going to make a button. A button, there we go, with an onClick method. Uh, and that onClick is going to call a function called change color. Okay. And then I'm going to label, I'm going to add the text to that button saying change color now. There we go. And then I've got div closing, div closing, body, and HTML. So if I head over to my browser window and I hit refresh, I see I've got this button change color now. My background is still red because I haven't changed the CSS yet. Okay, so now the HTML is built. The only thing we can see on the screen is obviously the button and the red background we uh, set when we set the page up for testing. So now let's um, add some styling to this box div. The first thing I'm gonna to wanna to do obviously is wrap the box in a wrapper that fills the whole window. And then I wanna add some dimensions to the box itself and give it a border, just make sure it's transparent inside and the text inside the box is centered. And then finally, I can add some styling to the RGB glass. So let's go ahead and get rid of the body here. So the first thing we're gonna to wanna to do is affect the wrapper. So very simply, let's just make it the width 100%. So it'll take up the full width of your window. And then I'll make the height also 100%. And then I wanna take care of the box that's inside the wrapper. So I wanna make that width, let's say 250 pixels. Uh, make the height, uh, let's make it a rectangle. So 175 pixels. I'm gonna add a border, not a border radius, but that might look nice as well. Add a border of one pixel, make it solid and color it black. And then, actually, you know, I'll add a border radius of four pixels. Make sure the background color of the box is transparent. And align any text that's inside this box is going to be aligned in the center of it. And the last thing I want to do is style the RGB box. I'm going to make that margin, margin, zero auto. And I'm going to call the font family. So I'm going to change the default font of this box. And I'm going to make it something sans serif because I personally don't like serif fonts. <laughs> uh, serif, there we go. And there we go. So that's our CSS styling taken care of. And that's our HTML taken care of. So now if I reload the page, I have a button with a box with rounded corners that's inside, for all intents and purposes, another box that takes up the full width and height of this window. So last thing, obviously, is to take care of the JavaScript. So the first thing I'm going to want to do in JavaScript is go ahead and make the function that I call here in the HTML. So here on the button element, obviously on the on click. I call change color, but at the moment it doesn't actually do anything. So let's go over to the JavaScript and make a function called change color. So now whenever I click that button in the index, in the HTML, like on the website, it will call this function here. In this function, I'm gonna make a variable that calls another function. And I'm gonna call that function make color. So I'm gonna call this variable new color and it's gonna be calling a function called make color. So basically every time I click the button in HTML, it's gonna call this function in JavaScript. And the first thing that's gonna happen in this function is it's gonna make a variable called new color that itself is a function. I'm also gonna make a variable under this um, that I'm gonna call box. And this is basically going to be used to capture the box that I put here in HTML off the DOM. So I just realized actually class is wrong. I'm also going to need to give that an ID of box. And I'm also going to need to give this one an ID of 
RGB. A little tidbit here that in HTML you can give an element as many classes as you want, but you can only give it one ID. So I could call this class RGB test hello. So I can give it as many classes as I want, but I can only give it one ID. So back here in the JavaScript, I'm going to call this variable box and inside I'm going to write document. So I'm accessing the page, get element, element by ID. And I'm now telling it that I want to access the box element back here in HTML. I've given this div the ID of box. So here I'm saying, get me the element on the document with the ID of box. Okay, and I want to then access the style of that box and the background color. Background color. And I'm going to make the background color of this box whatever is in this variable. So at the moment, it's nothing, but it will become clear. The next thing I'm also going to do, I'm also going to call document get element by ID. And this time I'm going to take the RGB element and I'm going to give it inner HTML also is going to be new color. So you'll see in a, in a minute what this is actually going to do. So let's move on to the next step. Let's go ahead and build the make color function. So once again, I'm just going to write out function, make color and open it up. So in here, I'm going to do a variable called AR and put an empty array in there. I'm now going to write a for loop var i equals zero, i is less than three, i plus plus. Okay, so what I've done is I've made a variable called arr, which holds an empty array, and I've made a for loop that's going to count to three. If you've guessed by now, that's because in RGB colors, you need three different numbers to make up an RGB color. So that's what I'm going for. And inside this loop, I'm going to make a variable called num, and it's going to be calling basically an inbuilt JavaScript function called mathrandom. Mathrandom. And let's give that. 256. So this variable here called num is basically holding a function inbuilt to JavaScript called math floor, which removes any decimal points. Inside that, I'm calling math random, which picks a random number. And I'm telling it, instead of giving me a zero or a one, give me any number between zero and 256. And then I want to push whatever number comes out into the array that I've made above this for loop. So again, I've got an empty array. I then have a for loop that runs three times. So it's going to run once and it's going to make a random number and put it in num. And then it's going to push it into the array. And it's going to do it once more. And then it's going to do it once more again. So by the end of this part of the function running, I'm going to have an array with three cells that have three different numbers inside of it. So outside of the array, I'm going to make a variable called new RGB. And this is now going to be a string made up of just plain text and um, JavaScript code. So it's going to be RGB open brackets plus ARR, which is our array at point zero plus a comma plus AR at point one plus another comma plus AR at point two. So what I've done here is I've basically said start making a string called RGB and then open a bracket and then the first point in there I want to put whatever's in cell zero of this array that's going to be the first number comma the second number comma and then the third number, 
and then I just want to go ahead and close up that bracket and then finish that variable. And then I want to return this new RGB variable I've made. And it's going to be returned and go into new color. So again, a breakdown of how this JavaScript works. When I click the button, I call the change color function. The change color function then makes immediately a new variable that calls the make color function. Make color function is run. It makes a new variable inside of itself. It runs through a loop three times, making a random number. Each time the loop runs, it puts a new number in each cell of the array. And then after the loop is finished running, I make a new variable made up of a bit of string and then for the three numbers that I created. And then I return that new variable back to new color. So essentially once this, func once this uh, function make color ends itself, whatever is in new color is gonna be this new RGB variable. And then I go on and I make an element called box out of our box element on the HTML. And I also access the RGB element on the HTML as well. So moment of truth, I go back to my browser and I refresh it. And now if I click the button, you see something has happened. I have a color RGB 154221221. If I click it again, I get another color. If I click it again, I get another color. If I click it again, I get another color. So I can see here that my code that I've written is working. Okay, so now that I've got to this point, what could I do in the future once my skills advance a little bit? So here's something I actually made a little bit earlier. In this format, I'm controlling it by hitting the space bar. And not only am I returning to the user the RGB value, I'm also returning to the user the hex value. So if I hit space, every time I hit space, I get a brand new color. And if I just open up the console as well, I will be able to see if I say inspect on this, on the body element, that I can see immediately the background color is RGB 249191226. Okay, so there we have it. We had a problem. Uh, we needed a random color. And then we came up with a solution. We wrote it in JavaScript, how to make a random color on the computer. So once again, thanks a lot for watching. Um, it was really good fun making this tutorial. Uh, it was really good fun for me going back and also kind of relearning a little bit of vanilla JavaScript again. Um, so if you have any comments you'd like to leave me, then please let me know below. If you have any ideas for other tutorials you'd like to see me make, then leave me a comment below. I'll see if I can try and do it. And if you like this video, again, please go ahead and subscribe. Thanks a lot and see you next time.